Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to wire up our MLAB database uh, and using Mongoose. We're going to get that wired up to our to-do app so we can start saving data eventually. We left off by requiring Mongoose in this file. And here we're going to say, Mongoose connect that's a function and we're going to pass in and go back and get our long string here you put quotes around it this is where you pass in that string and then comma and we're going to use an object here And we're actually going to type use Mongo client. We're going to set that equal to true. It's just to avoid an error message that we might get. And after the object, in between the parentheses and the object, we're going to put another comma. We're going to put an empty arrow function, like so. And we're just going to say console.log. Connected to MLab, just like that. Um, of course, we need to put our username and our password in here. My username and my password in here. And save. And you shouldn't be putting uh, your username and password. You shouldn't be putting this. Uh, it's not ideal to put this string in a file uh, that you would later commit to some place like GitHub in the first place. Uh, later on, I can, uh, I'm going to show you where to put a file like that so it doesn't get into the files that go um, to GitHub or something like that. You want to keep it in a place where no one's going to ever see it. And I, of course, I'm going to delete this, um, I want to delete this database instance when I'm done with these videos. So right now we've got code that's connecting us. So we can come back and index uh, .js here. And we can say require dot slash models slash to do save and when we come back and run our npm start we get an error well oh, schema is not defined We just comment these two lines out for now until we have a schema. Oh, use Mongo is no longer necessary. Oh, one less thing to type, I guess. Get rid of that. Control C to shut our server down, and then we'll try running it one more time. Okay, good. So now we've got our server running on port uh, 3001, and we are connecting to MLab. So everything is working well. As you can see, you basically take care of the problems as they pop up. Nothing's ever too big a deal. Um, so that's pretty cool. So Control C is how you close your server down. And you notice you have to keep, your server doesn't refresh when you save a file, like React is set up to do. When, when we save a file when working on the front end, that server will reboot itself every time. Um, 
So just to jump over, I switched terminals real quick. And we have to do app. Saying to do app over here. If we change this file real quick and hit save, you can see our server compiles again and reboots real quick, and then our app updates automatically. It's a pretty cool feature of uh, the React. But our node, we switch back to our node server. Once that starts, we save, nothing happens. But we can get around that. We can run npm i dash d node m o n node mon. So we'll run that and we'll go into our package.json and we'll change our start command from node to node mon. And that is going to let us restart our app. Um, every time we save it. And you can see the text is already different. It's watching the app. And so if we come in here and hit save, it automatically knows and restarts it and updates our changes every time. So that's pretty cool. That's really nice for development. That's a great thing to use. So in here, we're connected below. Our import to Mongoose will say, we're bringing something else from Mongoose here. We're going to bring a schema. That's going to be equal to mongoose.schema. And we're going to say const do schema equal to new schema. That's a function, a constructor function that takes an object. And within this object, they're going to be the properties of our to do. So I'm thinking text, probably a good property to have. How about complete? Like done or complete, something like that. And when it was created, just to have a time stamp on it. But in order to make these right, we need to declare what type of object they are. Uh, we do that by using a colon. Text is going to be a string. That's the JavaScript object string, just a capital S. Complete is actually going to be a what's called a Boolean, so true or false. And this is going to be some kind of date. But we can even get more technical when we describe these. We can actually use an object. To describe these, we give it property so we can say type date. And what we're going to do for creating that is give it what's known as a default. So every time it's an object, we create a new object, it's going to default. And we can call date.now. Or we could call date, whichever way you want to go. Um, now, I think text, I don't think, has any special considerations. It's just going to be a string. Uh, complete, on the other hand, we could actually. That type is going to be a boolean, and default is going to be false because our to do is not done until we do it. 